So the other day, Nate from the 8020 Drummer Holla. posted a video lesson about Bill Burr, and in that video he played to uh, Good Times, Bad Times by Led Zeppelin, but instead of playing the cowbell part on a cowbell, he was playing on the rim of his tom, so I thought, well damn, someone needs a cowbell, so Nate, here's your cowbell. Here behind my shed, trying to find some knowledge. But no, seriously, this is my scrap hoard slash mess of random steel. So all the stuff down here is uh, shelling from like a grocery store. You can see like the price tag right there. But I'm gonna use a piece of this. It might be a little bit too thin, but we'll try it out and see how it sounds. So first I need to make a template and instead of drawing one, I covered half of this cowbell with tape. So that way I can take the tape off of the cowbell and apply it onto the steel and have the right shape. And because I use tape, it's really easy to apply it to the steel. And then to mark out the template, you could trace it with a Sharpie, but it's way easier just to use paint. So there's one side marked out. And then I did the same thing for the second piece. Oh, and then also I decided not to use that shelving just because it was way too thin. And then it's just a matter of cutting the pieces out. So to bend these pieces into shape, I cut out these grooves and these blocks of wood and that'll help me clamp down on this piece of bar stock. So you can see that I have the cowbell piece clamped underneath the, the bar stock or the, the steel rod and actually that's the same rod that I used on the lens drum that I made for uh, Juan Carlito Mendoza. But basically I'm acting as a giant or a human, I should say, a human sheet metal break. And then of course it needed a little bit of persuasion with the persuader. And then the same thing on the other piece. And then before I did the other side, I had to flatten it out a bit. Oh man. That ain't going nowhere. A little uh, lopsided, but uh, a little hammering will fix that. You like my anvil? Ugh. And then after some trimming, some more hammering, and some fine adjustment, I was left with a pretty good seam that lined up well. And then I clamped it together and welded it. That's hard to say, welded it. Welded it. Welded it, son. I then flattened out each side and to check it, I used a light and a flat surface. I also had to do some minor adjustments to get the shape just right. So I clamped a crowbar and the vise and did some hammering. And here I'm painting the cowbell pink because I know that's Nate's favorite color. But no, I'm actually just getting a template of the back so I can weld that piece on. So I cut it out and did a little bit of shaping on the belt sander and I was left with this. And then in order to weld that piece on, or at least get a tack on it, I had to clamp it in a clamp and then put the clamp in a vise and then I could tack it. And then I can fully weld it and I'm skip welding just to maintain the heat a little bit. And this is also when my welder decided to act funny. This 
This thing is a piece of... I then ground down my blobby welds and bent up a mount. If you want to see how to make this type of mount, I've showed it before in previous videos, so I'll leave a link if you want to see how to do it. Ground might help. And of course, you gotta weld it on and then you're done. All right, I lied. There's actually one more step that I need to take. So every other cowbell that I've made in the past, I've painted the inside black, just so you know, have a uniform color on the inside. But more importantly though, is it'll help prevent rust. And then for the outside, I usually use paste wax just because it's easy to apply and it doesn't really add too much gloss to the finish, but this cowbell was a little bit ringy, so I thought I'd try something different. Remember this zip tie? So I'm using spray lacquer on the outside, and my thought behind using this over the paste wax is that it'll add a film around the surface of the cowbell, which will cut down just a little bit on the overtones and the ringiness and also it'll help prevent rust. All right, so just being straight up with you guys, uh, the shape of this came out a little bit different than I was expecting. It's a little bit more skinny. I kind of screwed up when I was bending it, uh, but I figured I'd go with it and see how it sounded. And because of the shape and its size, it's pretty high pitched. And because of that, I've been calling it a mini Mambo Bell. But if you have a better name, I'd love to hear your you know, ideas. Uh, so because it's so ringy, a little dampening gel about halfway down on the bell makes it sound pretty good. And I know you guys are dying to hear it. So to hear this cowbell, you gotta click on the link in the corner, on the screen, or down in the description. And that'll take you to Nate's channel, aka the 8020 drummer, where he has a lesson for you guys and he uses this cowbell. But also while you're there, you should check out his other videos because he talks about a lot of stuff that other, you know, drum lesson channels don't talk about. So definitely go check out his channel, tell him I say what's up, and give him a sub. But yeah, if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and, uh, you know, share it on Twitter or Facebook or whatever. So yeah, thanks for watching.